How the American Bison Almost Went Extinct. This is the American Bison. Its scientific name is Bison Bison. It's only distantly related to the group of mammals that are real buffalo, but so many people call it a buffalo that even the dictionary says that's okay. Bison are the biggest wild mammals in North America. A female weighs around 1,000 pounds, the same as a grand piano, while a male bison can weigh twice that. Today, there are about 530,000 bison on planet Earth. That might seem like a lot, but researchers estimate that before the 19th century, there were 20 to 30 million bison wandering North America. Million! And yet, by 1902, there are only 1,094 bison left in the whole world, and most of those were in zoos. So, what happened? How did bison go from 30 million to barely a thousand? Extinction factor number one. They were tradable. Native Americans had hunted bison for years, but until the 19th century, they only hunted them for sustenance. Suddenly, bison were worth more than just food and material. They were tradable. A bison tongue or hide could be exchanged with white men for much desired things like guns and horses. Some Native Americans changed their hunting habits to take advantage of this, killing far more bison than they ever had before. Trappers, traders, and soldiers also got in on the action. Extinction factor number two. They got sick. In the mid-1800s, more and more white settlers traveled west across the plains. Some brought along their cattle, and, as the cattle passed through bison country, common European bovine illnesses jumped from the cows to the bison. Infected bison herds didn't necessarily die, but they did become weaker and more susceptible. Extinction factor number three. There was a drought. A decade-long drought, to be precise. Less water meant less grass, which meant less food for the bison. Real disaster didn't strike, though, until the late 1860s when the trains came west. Anyone who wanted to reach the bison could just jump on a train. And they did. Hunters took special hunting trains west. When the bison were in sight, they would open the windows and stick out their guns, shooting as much as they wanted and never stopping to collect the bodies. Sports hunters like these probably killed anywhere between 25 to 100 bison each day. Commercial hunters were worse. Greedy and disorganized, they slaughtered indiscriminately, killing more bison than they could ever process. Historians estimate that 2 million or more bison were shot and killed each year during the 1870s. When the bison vanished in Kansas, hunters didn't pause to ask why, but simply picked up and moved to where bison still could be found. First to Texas, then north to Dakota, Montana, and Canada. Only in 1883 did reality hit. Hunters arrived in Montana expecting the same profitable slaughter as the previous year, but not a herd could be found. The bison were gone. Extinction factor number five, their deaths were militarily strategic. During the 1860s and 70s, the U.S. Army was at war with Native American tribes who lived in the American West. Leaders like General Sheridan knew that the tribes relied on bison to survive. Destroy the bison, therefore, and you will destroy the Indians. While there was no official on-the-books policy about killing bison, the words and actions of the U.S. Army and its leaders speak otherwise. Finally, extinction factor number six. Most people didn't know that extinction was a thing. Most Americans in the 1800s believed that animals were inexhaustible, a never-ending resource. Species like the bison, the passenger pigeon, and the sea otter were all becoming harder and harder to find, but almost no one stopped to ask why. Lucky for the bison, biologists, taxonomists, and hunters figured out what was happening before it was too late. The American Bison Society, established by William Hornaday and supported by powerful figures like Teddy Roosevelt, stepped in at the last moment. They raised awareness of the bison's plight, launched captive breeding programs, founded nature preserves, and almost single-handedly turned those 1,096 bison into 3,000 by 1913, and then 20,000 by 1936. So, next time you see a bison, whether it's on a stamp, the logo of a sports team, or just wandering its way across the open plains, remember, we humans almost made them extinct. But, we humans are also the reason they are still around today. And that is how the American bison almost went extinct. If you want to learn more, check out these books. 